So <laughs> people would be watching this conversation. Right? Okay. Uh, today we have Rachna with us and Rachna has nailed it. She is now working as data analyst in Alshaya, which is one of the leading companies. And I will leave it to Rachna to talk more about Alshaya because it's, it's a brand within the Middle East market. It's a brand to reckon with, right? And working in the space of data for Alshaya is a premium, according to me. Right? So Rachna, how was your journey like to get into this field of data science? Can you throw some light on that? Sure, sure. So basically, my graduation was not in IT or computer science. So I'll be very specific about that. So I have done my uh, graduation in electronics and communication engineering. Then after that, uh, you know, I somehow, you know, started wanted to get into this uh, data field. So I chose my master's in IT specifically. So I have done my master's in IT in, in um, Singapore. So all my uh, subjects were pertaining to data science and data analytics. Uh, but after, so when I was in Singapore, that was a time when, you know, this coronavirus came up and then there was a lockdown and I didn't get any opportunity to work there because of the lockdown and the job market was down and all of that. So that is when I joined uh, 360 DGTMG because I wanted to bridge that gap. So uh, I have done my uh, data science and machine learning course. Uh, and uh, I think many of them may be knowing Sharad sir, right? He was my trainer. <laughs> so I have completed my certification. I have done this IBM certification course. And then after that, uh, I started like, you know, so when I was doing the course, I was working with Baiju's as a data science trainer. So I was very much always with data from the time of my master's in Singapore, I was very much with data. Then, uh, yeah, so after I completed my course, I joined 360 DG TMG as a trainer. So I worked in Bangalore, I worked in Hyderabad. So pretty much I gained a lot of uh, knowledge, I should say, because I was training on data science, machine learning, and also I was assisting students to do projects. So you yeah. see, that is where, you know, I was able to do projects as well as train. So I felt that this is something, you know, which gave me a good, very good exposure. So I was very interested in data analytics. So the projects which I was doing also, I used to always do the analytics part. So to be specific, I am very well versed with Python, SQL, Tableau, Power BI and Advanced Excel. Wonderful. So I felt that these five things are like very important when it comes to see data analyst field. But like many, many of my students used to have the doubt that, ma'am, is Tableau important or Power BI important? See, there's nothing like that. It depends on the company's requirement. So the more wide skills we acquire, the more companies we can apply. Absolutely. Well said, well said, Rachna. So Rachna you made a very valid point and a lot of students for a lot of students i also suggest them this that you know with us the roles that we have is associate data scientist come trainer so you will have to deliver training so that you are in constant touch with the concepts your communication skills improve and also we saw we when you work on projects you'll get the real world projects experience exposure Combination of these two is extremely deadly, I would say, right? And you, you know, gain the knowledge of both these schools of delivering training. So you have good command, good communication skills. You can present your report very well to the stakeholders yes, 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 and yes. you worked on the projects as well. Yeah, very good. And now you have... Yeah, communication sorry. is really important. I would like to stress on that also because in an interview and even after the interview, because now we are working in a very, very multicultural environment with people from different nationalities. So you need to know English, right? Like I'm making this point because some of my students, they used to, you know, tell, you know, why, why, ma'am, why don't you explain in Hindi? Why don't you explain in Kannada? Why don't you explain in Telugu? So I used to tell them that, see, it is not that I'm against any language. It is not that I'm against any region. Okay, so I want to, you know, convey in English so that everybody can learn because every company, even if you're applying for startup, they want to grow. 
and they want to go to a multinational level so everybody wants people who can speak english there are enough people in the job market who are skilled right so if you don't know english they can hire multiple other people right so because every company wants to grow in a multinational level and you should be able to speak in a multinational level people require english so at the end of the day everyone needs a job right so you have to have good focus not only on technical technical also but communication also is equally important absolutely well said rachna because if you are aiming to get a job overseas especially given that a lot of nations speak english and given that you interact with a lot of nationalities of uh, you know different countries it really becomes um, you know imperative to understand and speak and communicate in english absolutely so um, how was your experience working with alshaya and you are now in uae can you throw some light on that yeah so basically i i don't know if like many people in india they may or may not know alshaya but let me tell you all that the it team of alshaya is there's also one it team of alshaya in bangalore okay but i don't know whether many people know about it so alshaya is basically a brand franchise operating company so there are like many premium luxury brands which you people may be knowing like starbucks american eagle debenhams h&m uh, right mac bath and body works body shop and uh, yeah many 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 more brands uh, so almost 70 plus brands are there okay charlotte tilbury and all like many of them like they 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 operate only on a very international level so this company basically you know it tells them that okay so you know you people uh, give us the responsibility of operating your brand in our country so it's basically so completely from you know deliver, delivering their shipments to the store right from maintaining the store everything is done by alshaya throughout this middle east north africa Uh, and all the regions completely it is done by alshaya so yeah so this is what it does so basically all these uh, big brands which you people are seeing the shipments are from dubai most of the shipments they move from dubai so i basically work in the group freight and shipping department as a data analyst so that you know we can track uh, you know the complete data of each and every good how it is coming in how it is going out how much amount we are spending on each brand right so which brand is having maximum delays so completely we deal with all of this data so this is about alshaya and what i do at alshaya yeah yeah wonderful extremely nice to know that rachna in uh, 2018 if i'm not mistaken i got an opportunity to deliver training to employees of alshaya in bengaluru in whitefield to the <laughs> it team it okay. was all about analytics and uh, statistics Uh, things of that can we also deliver trainings on project management scrum methodology okay. six sigma and all that i was uh, delivering training then i traveled to kuwait okay. and then uh, i delivered training at their uh, head office there i think kuwait is the head office for uh, middle east region yes. yes. you are yeah. absolutely right yes it right. is and it then is. Uh, i went to dubai i delivered training there as you were saying right in sheikh zayed road there is one office i actually deliver training there yeah. and then from there to saudi arabia and so on and so forth okay. so it was a very good experience and friends alshaya is amazing any of these big brands which rachna has just spoken about if you want to have a franchise of that in mina region that is middle east not the uh, north africa or turkey or europe you have to go through alshaya only and the best part is Rachna has thirty percent discount on <laughs> any of these brands. So next time you are in Dubai, please make a note. But and... you have to pay using my card. Only then you get it. Huh? <laughs> Last time when I was in Kuwait, I have taken one guy along with me. He was an Iranian okay. national, but uh, he was okay. working with our Al Jazeera in Kuwait. Okay. And uh, there is a mall called as Three Sixty Mall. It's a okay, okay. mall. and i took him to american eagle store i made him purchase using his <laughs> card of course i paid him money so yeah next time i'm in dubai i would certainly make use of your card yeah, sure sure <laughs> yeah. and rachna uh, one last question 
you know a lot of uh, feedbacks probably you want to give to our students who are undergoing the training yeah, or yeah. Uh, who completed their training who are in search job search yeah. but what is the one single most important uh, feedback that you want to give rashna among all these uh, suggestions that you want to give if i were to say one single most important suggestion from your side see as i told persistence see only persistence because um yeah so i know everybody is maybe putting a lot of hard work especially people who are in this job search but this hard work should be persistent you mm -hmm. should not give up Wonderful. that is the most important thing because let me tell you it was not so easy for two months every day every single day my work was to get up and apply for jobs mm -hmm. every single day in okay. this in two months every single day and it's like the most challenging part here in dubai is your resume getting picked because oh. because let me tell you in dubai only out of maybe every day they are getting 1000 resumes or 100 resumes only five resumes they will shortlist okay and in that five they will take one or two mm -hmm. so the challenge here is your resume getting shortlisted okay. so once your resume gets shortlisted it is 50% or i can say 60 to 70% that you got the job wonderful okay so so it is like resume getting picked was the most difficult part it's like i told you every day i have to apply minimum 20 to 30 companies uh, but yeah so my resume got picked in like three companies in wow. that i chose personally alshaya because i know i like really wanted to work with alshaya yeah. but Uh, what happened is that two months, yeah, I underwent lot of frustrations, ups and downs. Like, why my resume is not getting picked? What, what are the changes I need to make? Then I found out, you know, strategy, persistent strategy is the next important thing which I feel, because one thing what I did is um, I found out, uh, like, you know, how the resume should look like in Dubai. So you know, it needs to have a very clear photograph of you. and your phone number your address should be your dubai phone number dubai address otherwise it will not get picked uh -huh. you also add information about your visa and passport okay got it otherwise the resume will not get picked so these things were not there in my resume initially so then i also added each and every uh, detail about you know my visa visa expiry passport passport number passport expiry all of that uh, and yeah so i just prepared my resume according to that and one more thing is um, you need to know how to practically use the tools because here interviews are not conducted like you know orally so it's like okay first interview they just get to know about you so here it's always like first will be the Ashna, I think. Uh, let me see if that's an issue at my end. I think we lost uh, Rashna here. But what Rashna is telling his friends, perseverance is extremely important. A lot of people who get trained give up midway. Okay, they are like, okay, I'm. I give a try for a month or so, and I'm done. No. there are a lot of our students who got jobs after one year because it depends on the iq level of the person as well right it depends on the iq level and intelligence of uh, the person the grasping level and all of those things it's not that everyone would get a job in a defined time period yeah sorry rachna um we lost you i, I was just uh, repeating you know what you were saying that perseverance is the most important thing and one more very important thing which rachna has uh, told us is about ensuring that the resume is prepared to suit the needs of that country if you want a job in dubai then you have to ensure that your resume is prepared accordingly like your visa details your passport expiry details and all that so that your resume quickly gets picked up so rightly said it's all about perseverance and it's about making changes to suit the needs of the nation right all right yeah. thank you thank you so much rachna and yeah you were saying something yeah yeah so i was just saying that yeah here everything is very practical use case 
okay so firstly uh, your first interview will always be telephonic in dubai in uae anywhere so the first interview will 100% be telephonic so make sure that whatever companies you are applying you know at least little about that company mm -hmm. okay and because suddenly you get a call and you have to know uh second point is okay they will secondly they will call you for the hr on any company in dubai any any company so first they will get to know you as a person only if they are okay see in india it's reverse right first the technical round happens and then the hr all right so mm. here they are very much interested in your personality mm. first yeah they give first preference to your personality so only after the hr round you will have the tech round tech round is not like you have to write a code or something like that it is not like that they will give you real time data they will mm. tell you merge merge it so we oh. have data from different source merge it and then mm. they will tell you okay you have merged the data now create a report for me for so and so so and so things ah okay so you have to create a dashboard okay no. on spot they will maybe you will have one hour two hours you have to just create a dashboard and show them wonderful wonderful that is exactly <laughs> then, how people have to interview here as well and rightly said uh, rachna until unless you have the practical exposure there is no question about getting a job at least in the overseas market yeah <laughs> because you know they they are they, they are only interested in how you will be useful to their company yes. right so what challenges they are having they will ask you to solve that Absolutely. so they do not take right there is no use of you know you writing some code and just showing them that is executing and that is a technical round i think that's not like that's what they do in india right as far as i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but here it's not like that they were interested in how i am going to represent their data mm look at right? that right in that they can understand and it is useful to them absolutely so yeah very <laughs> practical oriented interview you have attended yeah Uh, yeah good good i'm extremely happy for you rachna i always knew that you had a spark and would anyways uh, rule rule the world no doubt about that in the space of data so all the very best for you rachna and next time when i'm in dubai i'll certainly pay a visit sure sure and sure i when i would like to meet you a lot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> rachna thank you so much and take care